Well, hi, guys. Sorry, we're a little late to the table. We've had some developing news that yeah. I wanted to get everything on and see what was going on before we actually came on air about. There you go. Yeah, that's been a weird week. Yeah, apparently news-wise, it decided to be an absolute wild one. Right. So, yeah. Kind of crazy, kind of crazy. But, yeah. Yeah. All it right, a wild one in general. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Mercury and retrograde. Thank you for coming to see us. Will you please pick up your damn makeup and get the hell out? <laughs> yeah, really. And more importantly, can can we just talk about the weather? Oh, shall we? Yes, let's talk about yeah. the weather. Because I, I feel like we're having the week of repeat Um, up to this point is that we've kind of gone from the, like, we, we had snow and ice and nastiness, and then we turned around and everything got really, really nice. And then we turned back around, and here we are again. Mm -hmm. Like, like that trip to Fayetteville this week, or, well, today, sorry. The trip to Fayetteville today was absolutely crazy. Just absolutely frigging crazy. It was. Um, yeah. Yeah, it was a manic panic day. But we've had that week where it was snowy in the beginning of the, the first of the month week. Mm -hmm. we go through, you know, and it's like, ooh, I can go out in shorts. Da, 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 da. Holy crap, no, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> like you need yeah. two pairs of pants. Yeah. And oh, and we got our new business cards in. And I made the joke to you earlier today is I swear to God, I should have just saved everyone some time. Uh huh. And just printed on them. If there's a 30 degree swing in temperatures, and especially if it happens more than once, I'm not available. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm in bed. I'm dead to the world. Mm -hmm. um, so if, if, for anyone watching that has been waiting on something for, uh, from me this week, I, I'm still here. <laughs> Barely. You know, we're going to talk down with duct tape. Yeah, it's, oh my God, because my, my sinuses go nuts. My body goes nuts. Um, I spent Monday in bed. Like, that's all I could do. That's mm -hmm. all I could do. Um, because we we had Friday going into Saturday with all the snow and crap. And then we turned around and Sunday was in like the 50s. And I cleaned up the car. And then I was done. Right. That was it. Uh -huh. Like that, it, it was like 3 p.m. Sunday. Someone flipped a light switch, and I went, uh -uh. <laughs> just done. All right, and then you know uh -huh. we're going both doing physical therapy. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. You know that's always fun when there's two of you. You know doing PT because you come home, and if it's done right, you're ready for a nap. Yeah. Done well, wrong, you're ready to kill somebody. Well, there's that. And for me, what I've noticed is like the day of, like everything gets adjusted and I feel better. Mm -hmm. And part of me is almost afraid I'm screwing myself up a little because I feel better. I like, I come home and I kind of like, like nothing hurts. I feel better. I, I, my head is clear and I want to do stuff. Mm -hmm. And, like I think last uh, last week I screwed up. I think I tried to do too much and kind of hurt myself a little. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah. And you know I think that was part of Monday shutdown anyway. Mm -hmm. um, but no, it, it's but I like I get this new energy and I'm like ooh let me take care of this thing and that thing and this other thing and let's go here and let's go there and let's do this. And while I've got the ability, uh -huh. you know, let me go do that. Right. Um, and then it's usually the day after that I'm like, Oh crap. Uh -huh. <sighs> and and you'll learn that's the cost you pay. It's like I do the yard and then I go to sleep for a day. Pretty much. Pretty much. Yeah. You know, um, but hopefully spring will be here along soon. Oh, my yeah. YouTube vlogs will be back up because, you know, we're going to redo the yarding. There might even be um, bears doing construction. Um, mm. Yeah, I'm really seriously thinking about one of those, you know, moving my office to the backyard in a kit. 
<laughs> well, that's a theory. That's a theory. That's yeah. Instead of you know, that'll be fun, and then it, you know that'll be cool. Oh yeah, yeah. But you know, I'm already running plans for the garden, plans for other things I want to do. It's mm -hmm. March. This bear is getting a little wakey wakey, and I was like, yeah. okay, come on, let's go. Yeah, really. Yeah. Or at least we're trying to. Like this yeah. like this weather snap, I don't know what it, all it's going to do to us. I'm just happy we're not running all over God and creation this weekend. Well, it's March. I normally make sure it's a light schedule. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, but yeah. Well, and I mean, especially with the, like, the snow. Because last week we were running all over God and creation. But and the weather hadn't hit. Well, yeah, but, you know, we lucked up on that. Like, the weather right. played with us well. But I was going to bed Friday night like, uh-uh, we ain't going nowhere tomorrow. <laughs> uh-huh. I'm going, oh, yeah, we are. We <laughs> it, it, it turned out well. It turned out well. You know, um, but, you know, so hopefully you guys will enjoy those vlogs over on my channel as spring gets in and, you know, we start tearing things up and building things again, and who knows what else I'll get into. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, but, no, the news we were waiting for was BuzzFeed, for those that follow RuPaul's Drag Race, yes, this is a glitter bear topic. Take a mm -hmm. moment, put on your shades. Oh, this is not yeah. a glitter bear topic. This is not oh. a glitter bear topic. Like, if we were just going to be like, oh, my God, RuPaul's Drag Race, and here's what happened. Uh -huh. Um, if that were it and it were going to be just like regular drama, like mm -hmm. the normal, I can't believe she said that and blah, blah, blah. That's a glitter bear topic. This is not a glitter bear topic. This is not a glitter bear topic. This is some screwed up mess. Right. That like, it, it's a bigger than RuPaul's Drag Race. This is just sick. Right. And aggravative and constructively destructive. And what she done is terrible. Yes. But for those that don't know, season 12 drag queen Sherry Pie has been disqualified. Uh-huh. And this is not even like boyfriend came over and shouldn't have been over like the Willem case. No, 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 no. This is catfishing at a whole new level. And I've seen this in the both industries before. Mm hmm. You know, but it's weird to say the least. The whole thing is weird. Um, like, I get people have sexual fantasies. I get that people want to role play. I get that people can get carried away. Mm hmm. Um, first of all, this was very exploitative. Mm -hmm. Um, in just like, how and I like sorry I screw the drag queen crap. Uh, how he went about it, uh -huh. um, you know. Um, one, it, it was just really, really exploitative. Right. Um, two, it was pulling in people who had no interest in being part of a fantasy. It like this wasn't their thing, um, and. Three, it was almost career destructive uh, for at least one person. Actually, because right now we've got five confirmed cases. Uh huh. And at least two of them, it was career destructive. It, one is possible because he turned down a role for he, Disney. No, 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 no. Didn't turn it down. Almost it, turned it down. Almost turned it down for Disney. Almost turned it down. For her bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, let, jump into it. Explain the situation. Because uh, I I still struggle with that one because, yeah. yeah. Like, I had to keep, like, I'm sitting here reading it, and I'm having to go through the two frames. Mm -hmm. uh, or, like, the two lenses of reading it. It's one, this, like, as an third party reading it, it's like, how did you fall for that? And then there's another part of me having to go, okay, well, let's stop for a second. Because as you read through it, it starts to explain that, yeah, actors go through some crap. 
Well, a lot of entertainment in general goes through crap. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. But here's the basis. She would come in contact with people. She would say, oh, I have a casting friend that's looking for your body type or looking for your type of acting. She'd give them a Gmail address. The mm -hmm. Gmail address would contact them. There'd be conversations back and forth. Um, and then audition tapes. Yeah. And then returned information of, well, you know, the, the one of them was a supposedly a show called Bulk. Yeah. Which was about bulking up. And, you know, they're looking for someone to do X, Y, and Z. And can you do X, Y, and Z? And then she would coach them into how to do X, Y, and Z and make communications about it. And she's this person. Yeah. Turns out yeah, this was just an email address that went to the same person. Right. Um, Joey, mm -hmm. whatever his last name is, I can't remember. Hi. Yeah, yeah, basically, yeah, Sherry Pie. Um, all of this, like this supposed casting agent never actually existed. Um, like no one ever knew who she was, turns no. out, and lots of people got pulled into it. The beginning of the unraveling was when, oops, you happened to get two people who knew each other. Mm -hmm. One of them said something about dropping out of another gig or like debating a, uh, whether to take one role while still talking about this other role uh, right. with her. Mm -hmm. um, like, what do I do? Not really sure. And like, it was like, wait, that's really familiar. Mm -hmm. Like, ah, what? Like, let's compare notes. You know, like, hi. Yeah, and then, then and it's very common for people to be going for the same role that may be in the same circle. Yeah, but and that's true. But when you're sitting there and you've been going back and forth for a while, mm -hmm. and it sounds like both of you are being put into the same like, if nothing else, you're at least running neck and neck. Right. Like that's when you're gonna at, at least compare notes and go, "What the hell." <laughs> Especially, like, for the one who's already thinking, like, this is getting weird. Mm -hmm. Like, this is getting really weird. Right. Like, this is weird. Right. Um, you know. But, yeah, apparently, uh, like, it got to the point that one person auditioning actually went so far as to masturbate a as part of their audition. Right. And send in a tape of that. Well, more importantly, right. make it with him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like. Yeah. yeah. So that, basically, that, there, that's like, okay, what are we applying for here? Mm hmm. Well, there's, well, I don't know. I mean, because you got to sit and think there are some roles that may end up being sexual. Right. But that didn't sound at all like what it was. It just seemed like this really messed up idea of, you know, like this was like a really poorly thought out, like, I think this would have been the moment that any rational human being mm -hmm. would have said, and I mean that in terms of Sherry Pie, is that any rational human being would have went, what am I doing? Mm -hmm. what, 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 wait a minute, what am I doing? Um, right. But the ultimate reality was this was playing into what sounds like a sexual kink and fetish. That this is... Very not much. necessarily gainer fetish exactly. This is more like Steroid fetish, sort of. Yeah. yeah, that's what this part was. The dude was supposed to be in a, a steroids and bulking up. Um, um, but she kept throwing in you know muscles and taking steroids to put on muscles, and yeah, that's a fetish. Big, huge, you know, muscular <laughs> man is a fetish. Well, and not even necessarily that form of getting bigger because there's always like the Master Dylan case where like those boys look like big and muscular, but a lot of it's injections. Right. Like saline, silicone, implants, all of that. Right. Not necessarily like working out and developing those even with the aid of testosterone. Right. Um, or and steroids, so sorry. Steroids, it's steroids, metabolic yeah. things, growth hormones, a lot of crap. 
mm -hmm. they can be really dangerous. Right. Now, if uh, what I'm glad of is, as far as we know, the five actors that have come forward, I'm quite sure there are more. And it sounds like it, yeah. Um, it sounds like it's ripped the lid off of it. Right. <clears throat> Thank goodness none of them were method actors. Yeah, that could have gotten ugly, but one would hope that before you commit that heavily to it, it's like, I want a contract. Yeah. Like, you're going to tell me I have this role and you're going to tell me, you're like, you're going to send me money. Yeah. You know. And more than $64 for a bus ticket. Yeah. And hopefully more than $900 a week. Yeah. Like, that seemed a little low even to me, but I think that was on a particular, like, Broadway kind of thing. Right. Like, that would be an ongoing stage production, and that, I don't know, I guess mm -hmm. seems reasonable if you include that there was housing involved. Like, yeah. here's your free home and 900 a week. Exactly. Okay, you could survive in New York City on that. Um, because one has to remember $3,600 a month in New York is not a lot of money. Right. And like, in some areas, that's like, like crap living rent. Exactly. Yeah. Or a, like a contribution to total rent for a space. Right. Um, because housing is that expensive. Right. However, this does bring up two common themes that occur a lot in our community. Okay. One, catfishing, in general, mm -hmm. happens literally all the time. True. Um, the other part is the reverse side of this, the catfishing, is the desperality. The, what, the desperation? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. You know, catfishing is a big problem. Well, it can be. Um, in terms of you do have to be really, like, aware mm -hmm. when you're talking to people online of the fact that you can be anyone online. Mm -hmm. um, until you meet in person, mm -hmm. you don't know nothing. Um, and that's a theory I've always had. Um, sure. is that, you know, until I meet you in person, I know nothing about you. Mm -hmm. Um, because that used to, uh, well, and I guess I grew up in that era where we had that self discovery, mm -hmm. um, you know, it, within the internet age is that it first kind of started out with people connecting as themselves. And then we slowly had a few people realize, but I could be anyone I want to be. Right. I don't have to be, you know, a married husband in Milwaukee. Mm -hmm. I can be a single woman in New York. Right. I can be, you know, or more importantly, as it used, as the joke used to go, is be careful about talking to 14 year old girls online. It's probably a, a 42 year old man in a basement. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and we kind of pick these things up. Yeah. Is that, you know, like we joked about it. It's still nasty, but, and it was then too. Mm -hmm. uh, but it drove home the point is that you don't have to be um, yourself online. Yeah. Um, and the majority, uh, and going by statistics, the majority of people do lie online at least about something. Right. You know, maybe they shave a year or 20 off their age. Maybe they shave an inch or add an inch or 12 to their height. Mm -hmm. You know, lots of things can change. Right. Um, you know, and even people who have pictures that actually are of them, sometimes they're a little outdated. Again. A decade. Maybe 20 years. Yeah, you know. um, but the other thing, but, you know, we've seen cases. I mean, there was a whole show on mm -hmm. catfishing that everybody go for it well i was going to point out that one that one uh one in particular was actually entirely staged that was a total scripted bs -y thing mm -hmm. um yeah but the premise was the same mm -hmm. like, like granted it, it's it's fake reality um, most of TV is fake reality. Well, yeah, a lot of TV is. Uh, most of it is. But, 
within that, it, it could it sort of was very true to the the reality of it. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, the problem with catfishing is that it like in those episodes in, in that context um with people knowing what's going on or it not actually ever being real uh -huh. um, you know it, it's easier i guess to well like you don't have the emotional processing behind it uh -huh. i've known people who have been catfished uh -huh. and yeah they don't react like that um I, i've seen people end up completely devastated right because they because built an online relationship well, and it, it, it you know, it, it's one of those things that when it happens, it, uh -huh. it's a lot like being scammed. Right. There's the immediate where you're like, you, even though there's little things that don't quite add up, but they still have answers for them. Like you, you feel this like, oh yeah, it's, it's legitimate. It's legitimate. You're, you're totally bought in. Uh -huh. And then to when you start to realize like when it all starts to fall apart uh-huh you, your brain can't process it right it, it's like but 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 uh -huh. um, like you you keep trying to hold on you keep trying to think well some of it had to be real something's real right somewhere there's a reality right. um, only to finally learn that no there never was um, and it, you know, the, the biggest thing with someone who has been scammed or catfished is realize is trying to get them to understand this isn't about you being stupid or naive or gullible. The, this is psychological warfare. Uh -huh. this, this is manipulation. Uh -huh. um, this is someone who has done this before. They've done it repeatedly. They have found what works and what doesn't. Uh -huh. Um, and one, they will totally do it again. And two, um, you you can't necessarily, well, you just can't beat yourself up for it. Uh -huh. um, you, you have to accept at some point that, yeah, there may have been warning signs for people outside of it, uh -huh. but you are in a different place with it. You are being yeah. emotionally manipulated. Um, and, and being told everything everyone wants to hear, um, or, or everything that everyone normally says in a legitimate relationship or in a legitimate situation, um, mm -hmm. or and with scamming in particular, a lot of it is fear based, right? You're being like one, you're getting all this fear fear thrown at you faster than you can process it, than anyone can process it. Uh -huh. So no, that's not about you being stupid or gullible. That's about, these are tactics that work on human beings. Yep, a lot. Yeah. And, you know, you don't, one, learn those overnight, and two, you certainly don't get good at them overnight. Right. So, sitting there beating yourself up because someone has taken advantage of enough people to be this good at it. Mm -hmm. No, no, mm -hmm. Not but it, we see a lot of this in the community of drag. Okay. We see a lot of casting couch bull crap going on in, um, the production in general in Hollywood. I mean, heck we just had what hair Weinstein. Weinstein. Yeah. Finally getting prosecuted mm -hmm. um, and convicted, thank goodness, he needed to be. But that yeah. was the way Hollywood ran. That's the way a lot of the club circuits run. Well, unfortunately, that's the way a lot of entertainment has has been. Uh -huh. um, regardless of, of what you're doing in entertainment, is uh -huh. that ultimately you have people that, that have money uh -huh. and you have actors, entertainers, whatever they are, um, you know, whatever this venue or this um, thing is that is considered entertainment that they do, um, whatever that titles them, um, trying to get work. 
Right. Um, so whether you're an adult film star, whether you are a stripper, whether you are, you know, a go-go dancer or you're trying to get, you know, serious acting roles in terms of, you know, stage productions and movies and okay. television and well now web series. Right. Um, because that's also become an issue. Right. Um, we have YouTubers pulling mm -hmm. this crap. Right. Um, they get a little notoriety and fame. Um, and all of a sudden, then there's this backflow of like talking to 14 year old girls, promising them, blah, 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 blah. Just send me some news. Right. And you have people that depending upon their life circumstances, may slowly get moved to a point where they're like, as one of the people interviewed for the article stated, uh -huh. people have done more for less. Right. You know, and, and when you think about it in those terms, um, it can start to become easier and easier to let your guard down and to, to kind of sacrifice a little to gain a lot or what seems like it would be a large gain. No. Um, and, and we see that in a lot of different um, uh, forms. Um, mm -hmm. the, the art world especially is notorious as, and I know we keep mentioning him he, uh, here recently, as Mark would point out, um, his least favorite words, Mark Davis um, would point out is his least favorite words are for exposure. Uh -huh. The amount of crap that artists get asked to do um, by people who don't want to pay uh -huh. or certainly don't want to pay legitimate prices right. um, and, and try to, to convince artists that, well, you know, anyone could do that. You know, that's what, a $20 canvas and some paint and, you know, blah, blah, blah. I can do that in my garage. Well, good. Go do that. Right. Don't or, ask you know, me. To how often do I get handed? Why don't you, you know, come to our event and you can for tips? Yeah. Mm, no. Well, yeah, and especially like, well, no. I mean, for some events it may work out, but generally it doesn't work. No. Um, you know, and if it's a if it's a decent cause, then that's fine. Like, you know what I mean? Like, we'll, I, I, and I've said it before, we'll do a certain amount of nonprofit support. Yeah. Um, but we're not, we're not making a lifetime of it. No. Uh, because no one can make a profit at it. Right. Um, yeah. And, you know, and that's especially when I'm traveling like three to four hours for things. Mm -mm. Yeah, no. No. I'll do like Operation Underdog if they would call and ask for me to come do an event in Beckley. No big yeah. deal. You know, yeah, I'll go support that cause. But some of these people, they're like, well, you know, you charge so much to be there. Yes, I do. Yeah. yeah. My time has value. My travel will cost money. My, you know, if I have to get it lodging, that costs money. I'm away from home. I have to eat. Mm -hmm. You know, um, starving artist concept be damned. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we have bills to pay. Yeah. Um, and that's the harsh reality of it. Right. Um, but we also see a lot of this with networks pulling mm -hmm. this crap. Um, and that's been an industry problem, too. Yeah. Um, and especially and in the gay community. Yeah. We, well, but you can well, also see it in IT as well. Uh huh. Um, and especially websites. Mm -hmm. Like, that's one of the things that sometimes gets me. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I try to be judicious with my comments. Mm -hmm. Um, so I will say this, there are lots of services that will register your domain, give you a little hosting and a, what you see is what you get editor to create your website. And they can potentially create a decent site. Mm hmm if you put in the time and the effort and you actually do it, mm -hmm. but you really work at it, mm -hmm. you can have a good basic. Right. Like, here I am. I exist. Exactly. 
and that's it. Right. You're not doing a web, you, or more importantly, you should not be doing a web store with that, um, or a product catalog, or trying to go beyond anything other than "Hello World, I am here." Right. This is my address. This is my contact information. This is a brief, I like idea of who I am and what I do. Mm -hmm. Business card level. Exactly. And that's what you get out of a lot of base services. Yeah. And there yeah. are businesses and people uh, that that's fine for. All right. I like, I won't argue that. I will not argue that. Mm -hmm. Not everyone needs a fully featured website. Right. That's fine. But, and it's a big but, mm -hmm. there are limits. If I, you're trying to run a retail location with products and services and a bunch of different things going on, no, you need a real website. Mm -hmm. And again, if you want to invest the time, effort, and energy to do that, mm -hmm. then good for you. Yeah. Um, but what often gets me are the number of people that will be like, oh, well, what do you charge? Mm -hmm. And I'll tell them. And they kind of have this scoffing moment of like, well, I can go over here and do this, you know, page editor thing for, you know, free or for 10 bucks a month or, well, that's fine. You go do that. Right. Like, but don't ask me to lower my rates. Right. Because you can. Uh-huh. Like. Uh, that's not my quality. Well, that's not my quality. That's not what I'm doing. Right. Um, I'm certainly offering you a heck of a lot more than that. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, if that's what you feel your business needs and you feel like that's how your business is going to grow best, mm -hmm. then that's fine. But don't look at me and ask me to lower my rates to compete right. with that. Right. You know, um, I, I'm not going to do it for starters. And, um, basically because that puts me in a position that I either have to do that level of work to turn a profit mm -hmm. or you're opening yourself up to some really bad people. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You can do a lot of damage to a business once you have access to their domain name. Exactly. Or you buy their domain name and hold it for ransom. Um, yes. Yeah, that's like McDonald's and the money that was made off of McDonald's.com was so out there. Um, but anyhow, something else to look at was, you know, and it, this really brought back to me. And nowadays, I just kind of roll my eyes at it. But when it first started rolling out, it was like, what the hell? You mm -hmm. know, we have gr those grinder messages or A for A or growler or anywhere else that there's gay chat hi i want to be your sugar daddy oh my god yes like though and those are granted those are usually so bad yeah like they're really bad mm -hmm. um which helps yeah um you know a lot of those are so bad it helps right um but ultimately what's going to happen is they're going to keep getting better. Mm -hmm. Like right now, like, and again, you run into this situation where, you know, it used to be a joke to talk about, you know, the bots online mm -hmm. because they used to just be like, hi, looking for someone new, visit our website at www. And okay. It's a freaking bot. And then they got more interactive, like, hi, I really liked your profile. And you would have to go a few lines to start to realize, oh, wait, you're you're scripted. Right. You, you like someone just paid attention and created a decent script. Because until you asked a question out of order or something, mm -hmm. you would like that's when it would be apparent you'd get a really oddball answer. Mm-hmm. You know, so then people started doing the what color is the sky? Mm -hmm. um, you know, that kind of thing. Or what's two plus two? You know, it would throw it off. Um, it still does. Well, it still can. Especially with the, um, hi, or like your profile. Cool. Nice. What you up to? Not much. Blah, blah, blah. Would you ever date a, a soldier? 
Yeah, that's a that's that's an annoying one. Yeah. Um. Then you. Yeah. Yeah. But now we're starting to run into more AI driven bots. Right. Like they're learning. Mm -hmm. They're starting to understand what the conversation is, what the what they're being asked. Mm -hmm. Not just assuming it, not scripting it, not kind of just doing a wait and delay and respond and da 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 da. da. This is an actual like her kind of AI uh -huh. that's, that's beginning to contextually understand the conversation uh -huh. and can sit there and go through a few levels uh -huh. and can start answering questions like what color is the sky? Blue. What's two plus two? Four. Uh -huh. Like it understands more of the conversation. Right. And so those start getting a little harder mm -hmm. to, to separate out, but those are still bots and are generally meant to push you to a website. Now there are a few that are catfish based. Right. Um, that if you keep going with them long enough, I think an actual human will step in. Right. You know, that, that like you're like kind of locked in here. Otherwise, they just send you a website and tell you or ask her your phone number or as you had one that uh, a while back that was like, what's your routing and account number? Well, that's because I it was it was funny because I get aggravated or I'm in that mood of, OK, I will play games with you. And, you know, they send the sugar daddy one, and I'm like, well, you know, I require $6,000 a week. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, because my normal comment is you can't afford me. Yeah. Um, and then it, it, the, the person or the AI or whatever came back and blah, blah, blah. And um, I think the comment I made was, well, unless you have a Swiss bank account, I don't deal with you. Oh yeah, the, like the total throw up for it was it didn't understand that concept. Uh -huh. And was like, is that the bank you use? <laughs> <laughs> that cracked me up. I'm like, oh my god, it really doesn't get it. No. Um, like it, like any, like a human would have gotten it. Right. Or at least someone with a like fairly decent command of the English language would have gotten it. Right. Um, what a Swiss bank account was or what an account in the Caymans was or, you know, something like that. Right. Um, you know, would have gotten it. But at that point it was like, but yeah. And that's when it's like, it. darn. Yeah. But no, I, I entertain them. But what I fear a lot is going on in the community. And I think we're seeing a lot more of it is people mm -hmm. getting hooked into that. Well, yeah. You know, and then we have the other side. And, you know, and this kind of brings into another drama Geddon thing. You know, James Charles recently, you know, started talking about, you know, people hitting him in his DMs with offers and, you know, oh, I want to date you and all this other stuff and then releasing it on TikTok. Well, yeah. And that can be a massive problem with celebrity. Yeah. Is that, you know, it's sort of like winning the lottery mm -hmm. is yeah. It sounds great at first. Mm -hmm. And then everyone, all the weirdos start flying out of the woodwork. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the long lost relatives, the, you know, person you vaguely remember dating 20 years ago now says that, you know, blah, blah, blah. And wants hush money, you know, that mm -hmm. kind of crap starts happening. Well, um, you know, just because you're now in a position that some people actually start to feel you didn't earn this. So why should I feel bad about taking advantage of you? Right. Well, and my other side of that or my viewpoint of it is why is he on Tinder? Straight boys are taking and DMing you on Tinder. Gee, I wonder why. Get off the app. It's not one of ours. Well, well, but still, still, yeah. um, you know, people look for love. Yeah, look for it in the right venue. That's like going to Walmart and looking for Gucci. Well, you know, maybe one day.
<laughs> no. Um, um, but no. But this is common things that happen with any level of celebrity. Yeah. You know, and catfishing occurs so often. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like people sliding into DMs. We've had that, and it's like, uh, nope. It, it it can sometimes get hilarious, um, mm -hmm. but yeah, no, you you run into a lot of people out there who just I don't know what it is. Like I don't like sometimes I just don't understand it. Mm -hmm. Um, on either side, All right? Um, and then you run into like, and one of the things that that gets me, and I, I think we've talked about it a little bit before. Um, like Shane Dawson, mm -hmm. um, YouTube, uh, YouTuber, him and his boyfriend have gotten a lot of flack over the years for Rylan's just using him, yada, yada, yada. Well, like a lot of power couples get that. Well, yeah. Um, and if you sit there and like, maybe if you compare their careers, you might on some level go, well, you know, Shane's the bigger star and Ryland isn't. Like, I don't know how you get that. Like, I don't know. Rylan did a lot of work. Yeah, like, and still he still does a lot of work. Yeah, he, he's not just showing up and being the pretty pool boy. Right. Um, You know, he, he's actually very, very intelligent and awesome. Mm -hmm. But he gets a lot of flack just using Shane, yada, yada, yada. But then you also have to turn around and look at Shane. And mm -hmm. before anyone goes, you know, that I'm saying, like, throwing off on Shane, that's not how I'm looking at this. Shane has had his own issues with mm -hmm. becoming a YouTube star. Right. And with the amount of money that has come in from that. Um, because his beginnings were small mm -hmm. enough. Right. That, like, the money is still mind-blowing. Right. Um, right. And he, you know, just recently, you know, in in the doc, you know, the beauty docu series, mm -hmm. was flabbergasted about how much he may was making, how much his merch was supposed to be making him, all that. Shane comes off to me as someone that doesn't have a clue. I don't think it's that he doesn't have a clue exactly as to his value. Well, no, I don't. I, I don't necessarily think it's that. I think that the numbers are at a point in which he doesn't know how to think in terms of. Right. And we like we see that sometimes all around the world, mm -hmm. um, in different perspectives. Right. Um, like especially when you have the the uber rich. Mm -hmm. You know, they they grew up where five thousand dollars was nothing. Right. You know, you destroyed a Lexus, big deal. You know, insurance will pay for it. You know, daddy finds it funny. Right. That kind of world um, that you, you can't, you you honestly get to a point, you can't think in small numbers. Right. Or like in the terms of like, you know, um, for instance, talking about uh, a, a potential future vaccine for coronavirus. Mm-hmm. Um, in the U.S. and, you know, talking about how much that may cost and whether it'll be affordable. Or having, um, for instance, oh, I forget which one it was, but the, there was one official that made some flippant comment about, you know, millennials needed to basically quit buying Starbucks and iPhones um, and learning how to manage their money. All right. Um, and it was like, you know, that's not even the problem. You know, like, like right. you're really not understanding how the world works. Or what's going on with it. And then also, and I know this as a creator because we went through this, mm -hmm. is looking at what value is. Mm -hmm. You know, when we had the rate debate that took like a week and a half. Okay. Remember, we, you know, the company was forcing me to up my rate, and I'm like, I don't want to go that high. Right. And, you know, you had to go, dear. Yeah. Here's the reality of this. Yeah, we sat and we ran numbers and went, you're in the 99 cent leagues. Yeah. 
Like you're 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 at the you are scraping the bottom of the barrel client wise. Right. Um, like these are the people looking for the lowest possible rate, and you're it. Right. You know. And so if you don't want scraping the bottom of the barrel, low rate looking clients, um, you gotta start charging more. Right. Um, otherwise you're gonna sit there and keep getting these same people that frustrate the crap out of you. Yeah, because the calling has to be from a rabbit. Well, you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Yeah. Or, you know, which rabbit were there were they with that night? But I can see St. Johnson's problem, and I'm really kind of aggravated with the people around him right now. Um, okay. But, uh, well, it's because as big as he is, that doesn't mean that we get the right to come in and start body shaming him and fussing because he hasn't put out makeup looks. I don't know. I, like... I don't know if maybe Shane has bitten off more than he can chew with this. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know. I My unfortunate problem is recently I haven't been keeping up. I used to follow a little more heavily. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then I kind of got distracted. Um, so I haven't kept up as much as, you know, maybe even you have uh, because of the crossover with Jeffree Star. You kind of got all in on the Shane bandwagon. Yeah, I just I found Shane because of Jeffree Star. I followed Jeffree Star yeah. for years. Um recently on his latest video, some egghead decided to go in there comment, Oh, it's so terrible to see Shane put the so much weight on and everyone around him laughing and jeering cheering him on about it. He needs help. <sighs> It's just so sad. Right. I mean, because he's not even... I would be surprised if he is over 200. Well, and I mean, part of it with Shane is his weight has fluctuated a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and if you go back far enough, he talks about all the unhealthy things he used to be doing. Mm -hmm. um, to keep weight off. Right. And so the reality is at this point is that like, I don't think he'll ever be comfortable with his body no matter what. Right. Um, I, I think he has sort of a morbid humor about it mm -hmm. um, or a dark humor maybe about it. Um, and it's a good coping mechanism. It is. Um, but I no, no one gets the right to judge him. No. Not not like leave it alone. Just sure. leave it alone. We because that's often one of the worst facets of it. Like if mm -hmm. you want to talk about things that cause, you know, worse health uh, health outcomes for obese people, that's pretty much top of the list. Well, like if you're trying to kill with him, it. please keep talking. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's like that. Like, that's what the world needs to hear. You're not going to shame anyone skinny. Right. Never going to happen. Yeah. Or more importantly, even if you shame them skinny, you're never going to shame them healthy. Right. Because the things they're going to do to get there are never healthy. Well, um, see, this is what pissed me off about it. Mm -hmm. Is if Shane had done the series. Mm-hmm. Took two months off, like he, nor he normally takes two months off from a series at least. Okay. Because he has to recover. I mean, it's just like us throwing a very, very long show. I ain't popping back in a day. Right. Um, and then he comes back and everyone is just on him mm -hmm. about makeup looks and where's the next video and... And it's like, where's the value? And now, and if you've even gone back and watched some of his older catalog, you know that he has body image issues. Yeah. Why are you targeting them? Well, right. And I think that falls a lot into the category of like the Brene Brown concept. Mm -hmm. Is it's just too easy mm -hmm. to tear people down. Right. Like to sit there and be the critic. 
it is like you don't have to do anything in your life, but you can still criticize. Right. Like you, you can be living in your mother's basement and, and, you know, have nothing, never do anything of value for anyone anywhere at any time, you know, coast through the rest of your miserable existence and mm -hmm. criticize every single person who hits your radar. Right. And that's considered acceptable. Right. Um, and at least online. Yeah, it's not. No. I think even not. more. And according to, you know, and, you know, quoting Gary Vaynerchuk, everyone goes, oh, but online you have privacy. No, you don't. Privacy is going away. Well, it yeah, in a lot of ways it is. Um, and moreover, like, it is especially if you're thinking you can go out as you. Mm -hmm. You know, if you can post online as your, your full legal name, Mm -hmm. um, you know, with a location of the city you actually live in and think that you can say anything you want to without repercussion. Right. That you're just, you know, supposed to have all this free speech. Mm -hmm. Well, you do. No one's going to keep you from doing it. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't prevent you from suffering the consequences of it. Like, mm -hmm. it's you know, it, it's kind of the old adage of there's no such thing as a free lunch. There, mm -hmm. Ultimately, at the end of the day, there is no such thing as free speech, mm -hmm. at least in terms of, you know, being held accountable for what you say, mm -hmm. that, that people have the right to do that. Right. Like, end of the day, you know, yeah, you can say whatever you want, but that doesn't stop someone else from going, you're an idiot. Uh huh. Or you're a racist, or you're a misogynist, and we don't want you part of our organization. Right. Or, or we don't want you having anything to do with our community. Right. Get away from my people. Right. And yeah. I think that everyone should have a right to do that. Um, I also think that people need to listen to what the hell they're saying, either in mm -hmm. voice or text. Um, and it's just terrible. And it's kind of like everyone knows Mayor PD left the race. Everyone except what Bernie and Sanders has left. I believe so. I think that's where we're at. Did Hawaiian finally leave? I I haven't paid attention today, honestly. Okay. It seems um, to be changing minute by minute. I don't know. Are we even right. having an election? Has, has the Cheeto canceled those yet? Like I don't know. Exactly. We may Not check true. the news after the show and find out we're, you know, now a dictatorship. I don't know. Well, anyhow. <laughs> so, someone came, you know, I was kind of backing him. I liked him. I liked Warren. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to see what Bernie has to say. Because I know Biden. We know Biden's work. We've seen his work. Yeah. Um, But someone made the comment of, I don't know why he had to make it claimed that he was gay. Yeah, that's always like the the smack in the face. What? Yeah. 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 It's like, hello? Yeah. Uh, kind of hide the, hide the first dude and um, very, you know, it's like hiding your hair color. And they just looked at More me importantly, what, to anyone who ever says that is like, yeah, and we don't understand why you have to make yourself so heterosexual. Mm -hmm. the God, the wife, the kids, the, you know, like, Jesus, you have to add them to your health plan and just shove that down your employer's throat. Mm -hmm. You know, like, that's the reality of it. Like, you're talking about a whole human being and a whole human life. You, you mm -hmm. like this belief that to like to an extent your sexuality is what you do in the bedroom, but that's not the end of it. You have yeah. a whole life around that that is influenced heavily by that. Mm -hmm. Like you, you can't just put someone in a box and say, "Well, this is your sexuality. Now keep a lid on it." Mm -hmm. You, you're going to inadvertently pop that out. 
like, where did you go for dinner? Or like, what did you do Friday night? Or, you know, inadvertently, uh -huh. like, it's not like you're like, oh, let me tell you how gay I am. You know, my boyfriend and I went out to dinner Friday night. That's not what it's about. No. It's not about me going like, I'm so gay. It is, that's my life. That's what I did. Like, ultimately, what you're asking me to do, what you're asking Mayor Petey to do, is to lie for your comfort. Mm -hmm. To tell you a string of nonsense. Mm -hmm. A, a make-believe fantasy world in which his sexuality can exist in a box. Mm -hmm. and, and not make you uncomfortable. And that's ultimately where it is, is you're uncomfortable with the idea and you want no reminders of the fact. Right. And that's impossible. Right. That's impossible. Right. But no, I, and I, I really, at that point, didn't know what to say to this person because I'm like, you don't get it. I know it's a different generation mm -hmm. and that generation is not your generation where they were, oh, those are just really dedicated bachelors that share a house together. Hmm. I get that. But that is, and I have to stay in that cannot be offended mode. Okay. Okay. Because I was in that role of I can't be offended. Uh-huh. Because of where I'm at and who I'm dealing with and the situation. Um, I could not... And, and I find a lot of people don't get that point sometimes. Okay. They get overly offended very quickly. Okay. But it's like, no, this is professional game. Walk them through this, explain this to them. Mm -hmm. Don't immediately lock them down and go, oh, you're such this. It's like, no, well, this is an educational moment. No. Well, yeah. And in the educational moment, I, I do typically struggle when someone goes there. Mm -hmm. That's one where it's like, well, what would you have preferred? Uh huh. What, like, what lies would you have preferred to hear? Because once he puts that in a box the way you want it, mm -hmm. everything else is to be a lie. Right. Like, you've got to tell one lie after another repeatedly so that you feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. Like, like try to understand, like, as a heterosexual, you're shoving your sexuality in everyone's face all the time. Mm -hmm. You just don't have to stop and think about it. You right. know, we've never confronted you and said, oh my God, you're being so heterosexual right now. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, you're being so heteronormative. Oh my God, you know, can you just please, you know, sh quit shoving your heterosexuality down my throat? Mm -hmm. um, because it's socially acceptable as long as, you know, your sex life is penis and vagina, um, how whichever side of that equation you're on, to talk about what you did on Friday night with someone you care about, to talk about where you're going and who you went on vacation with and how you spent your leisure. And, you know, all the little things that, mm -hmm. you know, sit there and try to monitor every single time mm -hmm. you're about to say something that inadvertently says, I'm a heterosexual. Like, sit there and realize it. And it's a it, it's a lot. Right. Like, well, you should like, realize you have nothing to talk about. Right. It's like one of the news art, well, it was a video thing, was making fun of Biden because he mm -hmm. was up talking about his Super Tuesday. And I, when you are on that level, when you're up on stage, you've got mm -hmm. blinding lights in front of you. You're trying to hold face and stay camera focused so that they can get the pinpoint. Mm -hmm. And he turns and goes to kiss his wife, but his wife and sister had switched places, and he ended up kissing his sister. It was hilarious, but at that moment, I thought to myself, what if that was Mayor Petey? You know, where is... I'm sorry, I don't know his name. I never got to know his name. He has a really cool Instagram account, and I know his username, but first dude... What, you want to erase that? 
effectively, effectively. Like that, yeah. that's the game plan is everything that you would consider perfectly normal about heterosexuality is suddenly gross, icky, and should, you know, is too gay for, you know, consumption. Mm -hmm. The minute it quits being heterosexual. Mm -hmm. And that's not realistic. Like uh -huh. people to lie about themselves to a degree that it be, that honestly, you should be concerned about the fact you're asking people to be that unethical. Mm -hmm. Like, more importantly, if he can shove all of that into a box, mm -hmm. you should be afraid of that. Yes. Because that's becomes, one, personally damaging. Yeah. Two, that opens a door you don't want people going through. That when they have to act at that level, constantly, never-endingly, it becomes easier and easier to lie. Right. And to be less authentic and less themselves and less engaged um, morally and ethically. Mm -hmm. um, and with that said, let me, let me caveat that. That is a lot of what we've asked. Mm -hmm. is through history to do mm -hmm. um, that in order to survive, in order to hold down a decent job and a, have a stable income and a place to live and, you know, healthcare and benefits and all the things mm -hmm. um, that's ultimately been the social contract right. is you're going to have to lie and then you have to be careful about it. Right. That, that within opening yourself up to, to that Pandora's box of lying about who you are, you then have to be very, very careful that right. you don't go too far. Right. Well, not only that, but you don't cling so far. Now, generationally, there's a lot of generational changes. There's been a lot of growth within the past 20 years. Got that. Mm -hmm. And that's where I think we have to switch at times mm -hmm. from how dare you say that and be offended and flip it to teacher mode of, okay, this is how, how this is why this is wrong. Mm -hmm. This is why this is this. Yeah. Well, and I think we're both on the same page with that is I, I like, I try to hit people with the truth bomb. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because that's, that's everywhere we are anymore. Right. Is, and a lot of it is that, is that there's that kind of older mindset of why do you have to be so gay? Why do you have to go throwing your gayness all around? Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, what you're, what you're describing isn't me trying to pummel into your head that I'm a gay. Mm -hmm. It's me living my life honestly mm -hmm. like what 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 do you want like you want that friends and roommates lie you you want me to sit here and editorialize myself every time i open my mouth about what i did and who i did it with and where we went and why mm -hmm. you know you want me to like i get being professional and not talking about you know like well my husband and i went to a gangbang this weekend like no that's not what our cooler conversation no. But if we went out to dinner, do I have to editorialize everything and be like, oh, well, my friend Raven and I went out to dinner on Friday night. And yeah, that's my roommate. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, you know, what, when are you getting married? Oh, I don't know. Don't know. Like, and talking about me finding the right woman. Right. You know, that kind of thing. Like, how it does become a, how dare you ask me to do that? Yeah. Because ultimately it's about making you comfortable that you mm -hmm. don't have to sit there and think about the gay. Well, and should you even have to? No, no one should. Like, but stop no. doing it. No, think about this. You are at your, you know, you are interacting with someone and they start talking about their wife. Uh-huh. 
teasing about their sex life? No. Why do they think about ours so much? Don't know. I've just never gotten that. Yeah. Never will I understand that. And I can sit there and watch the gears start shifting in somebody's mind. Yeah. You know, when I go, yeah. my husband. Yeah. Well, and more importantly, it's it, like to really drive it home is, is what I would like to say. Uh -huh. When you just said you went on a date Friday night with your girlfriend, my first thought was not about your penis going into her vagina. Why is it when I said that, you know, the two of us went on a date on Friday night, your first thought is whose penis went into whose butthole? Like, why did you have to, like, immediately go there? Uh-huh. Like, why is that a thing? Um, it, you know, I and I would love to, like, there are moments I really have to restrain myself and not be like, here's the truth bomb. Uh-huh. Of, like, why did you do that? Sure. Why did you do that? Or the like, more annoying yeah. one. And, you know, can we answer this on camera for the end of it? Oh, dear God. Because you get asked this one more than me, because I think they're afraid to ask. Okay. Who's the girl and who's the boy in the relationship? Depends on the day and how much makeup I feel like wearing. Well, moreover, we're both guys, so we're both guys? Yeah. Like, that's not how it works. There, It's not an analog conversion here. Mm -hmm. it, it's not like, you know, like, wh why do you have to have the, like, so tied to penis and vagina? Mm -hmm. Why? Why do you have to figure out which one's the, you know, the penis and which one's the vagina? Uh -huh. And I now have kindergarten cop running through my head. Oh, dear God. That's why I hate that conversation so much. Where? But like, if nothing else, if nothing else. Yeah, if nothing else, I just really hate that conversation for the fact that it keeps reminding me of all the bad Arnold Schwarzenegger roles. Mm -hmm. Because I have to go to kindergarten cop on that one. Right. And be like, hey, girls have a, a vagina and boys have a penis. Like, that's where my head goes. And then I'm stuck with Arnold Schwarzenegger in my head for the rest of the day. And I hate you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's where I'm at. Right. Um, yeah, and it's just... No Annoying. Will you send the invisible assistant in with a pack of cigarettes? Oh, that would be glorious. Can we do that? <sighs> you have to do that because he can't hear me. Aww. Invisible assistant. Invisible assistant. Paging invisible assistant. Cigarettes are needed behind the glass door. Cigarettes are needed behind the glass door. The white zone is for loading and unloading only. Uh -huh. Sorry, airplane reference. Anyone who got that, you're old. Yeah, please don't. Uh -huh. But no, and I think we need to start putting. The, I've seen this in a lot of videos, and I think that I'm going to have you record it. Please okay. don't send hate or anything else to anything we talk about, or brands or companies that we talk about on air. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's not what we're here for. We're here to talk about what's going on in the community and, you know, talk about some interesting things, you know, and some interesting, other interesting things. Yes. Yeah. Invisible assistant arrives. Yes. Um, but yeah, cool. Awesome. Um, something else that's kind of, that's kind of like, really, and you brought this up in Messenger right before we went to air. Yeah. Okay. Your policy. Oh yeah. 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 It's beginning to get fun. Um. So yeah. 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 Welcome to wonderful Fayette County, West Virginia. Um. Just saw that they had posted their coronavirus plan. Um. Which I think is going to get interesting because everything's pretty like okay. Okay. I can follow the bouncy ball. I can follow the bouncy ball right down to the line where they're like, and if anyone in the school system, like at a school is diagnosed or anyone, in, you know, staff is diagnosed, that school shut down for two weeks. I'm like, oh, this is going to get ugly. Like, 
oh, that's going to quickly get ugly. Like, I'm not sure how long that's going to be able to last. Right. Um, as in, I think it's going to be a pretty immediate response, mm -hmm. um, especially given that our wonderful Cheeto in Chief um, is so trying to downplay the coronavirus to prop up the stock market that he's literally telling people to go to work. Yeah. Like, oh, it's not a big deal. It's like flu. It's no big deal. Just go to work. It'll be great. All right. And I could Whoa. see where he's getting that it's like the flu because they're predicting that this may be cycling like the flu, as in it's not going to be a one and done like the SARS was. Well, but part two of that is also that a lot of the symptoms are easily confusable for the flu in the beginning. Mm hmm that, you know, it, it's in the beginning, it doesn't seem like it's all that bad. Right. Like it's, you know, it starts out and it's like, oh, you know, I feel bad. Um, and then gets progressively worse. Um, right. You know, and I can understand, and that's a long-term problem with our health system. Right. Or not with our health system, excuse me, but with our employment system and the way we treat employees and how we handle time off for health care and, you know, how how we do paid leave. Um, we're, we have created a, a society perfectly ripe for a mass epidemic. Right. Like there, there's no disputing that. Right. We quit caring about employee health. People are disposable. It is human resources. We're treating it like, well, you know, if we can't get you from one supplier, we'll get someone like you from another one. Right. However, the mm -hmm. thing that I am seeing positive here is people are now looking at work from home as more of a viable system. Oh, yeah. You know, and... Um, For those that have the ability to do that. Mm-hmm. Well, um, here's the thing. Yeah. Um, looking at that, mm -hmm. work from home, work from home, reliability, mm -hmm. I think that it is going to probably take a lot more newer focus. I think it will, but you have to realize the sheer volume of the workforce that one could even uh -huh. um, is not as big as the volume of workforce that, that needs cold warm bodies and cold chairs, mm -hmm. so to speak. Um, you know, all, all of your, like, it's kind of the unfortunate side of it. Mm -hmm. A lot of our employment is based around a warm body. Right. Um, in terms of retail, food services, hospitality services, um, all of your service industries require a people. Right. Um, and that's a large, large, large segment of our employment. Then mm -hmm. you around into things that just can't be automated or haven't yeah. been automated yet. Right. That still require a large number of people. Manufacturing is a massive form of that. Right. Um, call centers, especially. While though there are opportunities to work from home there, um, not a lot of, like call centers are really resistant to that. They like their ability to crack that whip. Mm -hmm. or tell people they are work probably the ones that are most mm -hmm. easily work from home. Home Shopping Network has been work from home call center forever. Right, but there are different sides of, like, customer service in a large, uh, like, if you're talking call centers by, like, demographic, uh, like, demographically, mm -hmm. um, if, if you're talking about customer service call centers, a lot of those are opportunities, and they're open to work from home. Right. Where you start running into problems are uh, more of your sales-driven mm -hmm. or your money-driven Mm -hmm. um, like collections, mm -hmm. collections hates the idea of work from home. Mm -hmm. They they are they have always been anti work from home because a lot of like a lot of your commission based industries hate work from home concepts. Right. Um, now, not taking into consideration like your 
uh, multi-level marketing kind of concepts. Like skip yeah. that for a minute. But anything that's payment system driven no. um, or PCI compliance or HIPAA driven, mm -hmm. those are typically, they start being very, they, they want you in a physical place. Right. They get very uncomfortable with the idea that you're sitting at home mm -hmm. accessing very sensitive data. Right. Um, that, you know, even no matter how much control of that they have, mm -hmm. there's still this fear right. that you could do some very bad things without, like, their, their thought or belief that someone being able to catch you. Right. Um, and that's not necessarily untrue, but that's not necessarily the same amount of risk that they think it is. Right. There are a lot of people in physical, you know, on-site office work mm -hmm. um, that still get away with a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, like a bad person will often find a way. And the systems will get better. The process will get better because of it. Right. But it's a build, build a better mousetrap scenario. You right. have to wait for someone to do the bad before you mm -hmm. figure out how to prevent it. Right. Um, you know, a lot of things are common sense and a lot of businesses are already doing those. Mm -hmm. um, but again, you can like trying to outsmart someone who intends you mm -hmm. wrong, it can often be very, very hard. Right. Um, and sometimes becomes counterproductive in terms so, of uh, limit mm -hmm. people to a point that they can no longer effectively do their jobs. Right. Like you have to balance the risk, uh, like risk and efficiency um, equation. Right. Um, otherwise, you end up with a bunch of warm bodies that can't do anything. Right. But at the same time, I think that we have a lot of options. Mm -hmm. the, for work from home that really need to be realistic. They can actually cut businesses' expenses mm -hmm. in a number of ways. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, they're talking two weeks quarantining households. Mm -hmm. I think we could easily do two weeks quarantine. Um, maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Um, I think our biggest concern is where we are in like food and supply shopping. Right. And like where we are budget wise. And moreover, mm -hmm. while you could still technically be sick and work from home. Right. Um, ultimately, one does have to consider the fact that you are still sick. Yes. And you're going to need rest. Mm -hmm. So it is going to at least momentarily change our income. Right. Um, so somewhere in that process and mm -hmm. hopefully closer towards you getting better, mm -hmm. um, the resources are going to get that. Right. So, yeah, it does create a problem. And it's a problem that everyone has is that financially and, and we're not necessarily in a massive suffering financially category. No. Yeah. Um, but for those who are, mm -hmm. the idea that they have the resources to stockpile for two weeks of being quarantined mm -hmm. and then extending beyond that with the fact that, you know, if you have a household of three people, mm -hmm. it's not like all of you are going to get sick and get better in the exact same two week window. Right. And what do you do in the, in that? Right. You know, the because, other part of it is, is this yeah. is opening up an industry mm -hmm. that was probably closed. Uh, well, that I think the door slammed on years ago. Right. Um, that that we kind of, I don't know. Like there used to be a lovely, lovely ability uh, in in a lot of areas, not necessarily always ours. Mm -hmm. um, like pharmacy delivery, food, uh, uh, grocery store deliveries. You mm -hmm. know, there were a lot of businesses that used to deliver that stopped. Right. Um, because it was an additional business expense they couldn't, that, that eventually it was inefficient. 
Right. Um, it, it didn't make sense for them anymore. Mm -hmm. um, that no matter how useful it was or how great it was or how wonderful it was, mm -hmm. um, it was an additional business expense they didn't want to pay for. Right. You know, um, so it may potentially open that door back up, but I think what we're going to see is businesses are going to charge a premium for it. Oh, yeah. And while that's great, if you're in that middle class and up category that you can afford to absorb a delivery fee, that still leaves a lot of people that aren't there, right. that don't have those resources, that are going to have employers threaten them flat out. You either come to work or you're fired. Mm -hmm. um, that don't have health benefits to go to a doctor and even right. begin to get diagnosed. They can't afford to be sick. Right. That no matter how bad they feel, no mm -hmm. matter how much they may think they have the flu or think they have uh, coronavirus, can't afford to admit it. Right. They have right. to go to work. Um, do you want out? So they spread it. Yes. Yeah. And one of the potential ugliest things is uh, reading an article while a uh, while back um, in the happiest place on earth. Um, Disney in lovely Florida, um, a lot of their a lot of those cast members, you know, those humans in costumes that, that make everyone's day special. Mm -hmm. Run around, you know, hugging kids and, you know, staying in character and being this personification of all these wonderful Disney creations mm -hmm. are often some of the most financially vulnerable people. Mm -hmm. um, you have cast members that literally sleep in their car. Mm -hmm. Get up, go to work, do it again, right. and go back to the parking lot. Right. I thought Disney still had dormitories. Um, I remember that being part of the article. I couldn't remember why that's not always viable. Okay. Um, like, and I forget the the details on that. Yeah. Um, but there, but ultimately, mm -hmm. um, Disney does not have a lovely comprehensive benefits package for cast members or for crew members. Mm -hmm. um, for those who are preparing your food, who are cleaning up the park, mm -hmm. who are, you know, doing all the other things. So you have a large number of people working for Disney mm -hmm. in the supposed happiest place on earth mm -hmm. that are also some of the most economically strained. Right. One, because of housing prices in that area, just general cost of living. You know, mm -hmm. the pay doesn't match up mm -hmm. um, to the fact that for um, some of Disney services, if I remember correctly, those are contracted. Right. And, you know, you have those contracting companies pay minimum wage. That's mm -hmm. it. That's all you're getting. No benefits, nothing. Mm -hmm. Show up or, you know, get fired. Show up or roll six the next one. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Like there's, you know, screw one out, screw the next one in right. um, kind of mentality of employment, which is all across the country. But when you're talking about a place like Disney, mm -hmm. you're a theme park, an amusement park, and this is not just a Disney problem. No. This is an entertainment industry uh, yes. problem. Yeah. Um, one, you have massive problems getting people to understand that I know this has been a dream vacation and a thing you've wanted to do and you've planned this out and you have put money into it. You know, you've taken your time off work. You have, you know, saved up to go. Now's not the time. All right. But getting people to like put their lives on hold. Uh-huh. Um, one brings them into the park. Yeah. And then in turn, you have those people forced to go to work. Right. As long as that park is open. And even if the park isn't open, you suddenly put everyone that works there, not at risk of the virus now, 
uh -huh. but at risk of financial ruin. Mm -hmm. You know, you shut down major um, visitor venues, mm -hmm. you put a lot of people out of money, yeah, out of work, out of ability to pay their rent and their utilities and buy food and go to the doctor and manage their health and keep their business open and keep businesses running right. because also on the sideline of that of yeah here's disney but over here's mom and pop pottery yeah all the things that that you know disney isn't just disney it's all the things around disney and on the way to disney Mm -hmm. um, that are also impacted too, if suddenly people aren't going. Right. Um, and that's been another large news item this week are the number of conferences or mm -hmm. cons being canceled right now. Yeah. South by Southwest, um, and also cons getting flack for not canceling. Right. Um, it was mentioned, I think it's uh, in Vegas, Emerald City, Comic Con, I believe it is, E C C C. Yeah. Um, I don't quote me, I'm not good. Um, but it's getting a lot of flack for not canceling. Right. That with this happening, now right. not the time. But it also becomes a problem is that all of those vendors are losing out. Right. All of those industries that may turn a profit during this period because of the massive influx of people are losing that money. Well, not only that, but then those venues mm -hmm. are losing that money, you know, mm -hmm. because as an event provider, you yeah. have to down deposits. By this point, you have already paid for the location, the staff, mm -hmm. the entertainment. As a vendor, you've already paid for your spot. You've mm -hmm. ordered your stock. You've got it all together. Google mm -hmm. canceled their conference. Facebook con canceled their conference. Mm -hmm. Amazon has told employees, do not travel. Yeah. Um, the whole yards there have mm -hmm. all said, do not do this. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, like it, it's a back and forth thing is you have to decide as a on one sense you're deciding as a society what's more important right stopping the spread of a disease mm -hmm. or the financial impact of it right but then at the end of the day either which way you're juggling real people's lives right. in that equation mm -hmm. you know is is it better to not get sick Mm -hmm. but financially ruined. Mm -hmm. And even if you can answer that question, you still have to deal with those people. Right. Like, and, and that becomes a massive thing that I think that as a country we're missing. Mm -hmm. We're not getting it. We're not understanding it. We're still not getting it through our stupid heads that we've created a system in which you're incentivizing people to make counter health choices mm -hmm. because they have legitimate financial concerns, mm -hmm. food, shelter, clothing, housing, medicine that right. are not addressed by our response. Right. They don't have the luxury to live. Right. Or and to then choose life or to choose intelligent health. Right. Now, the other side of this, what I'm surprised are, because, you know, a lot of these are tech conferences. Mm -hmm. Why are they not doing them virtual? Um, and some of those are moving over to that. Um, yeah. I believe that was a comment made on at least the uh, Google conference. Mm -hmm. I believe that one is definitely going to be um, held online. And I think the Facebook F8 uh, summit is going to be, I think it was canceled live, but is going to continue online. Cool. I think that, that was right. one I read. I think Paracon, uh, not Paracon, Cosicons can go virtual, especially mm -hmm. the ones that were delaying. You know, you can go and do video game 
conferencing online. I think that you'd get more attendance. Knowing the gamer community, you'd get more attendance. Can be, but some of that is, like some of the experience is the physical presence. Some of the um, part, like the vendor side of it, Mm -hmm. rely some of those rely on physical presence mm -hmm. um that you know you, you can't sell you know paintings as well online or jewelry or small items or you know t-shirts and you you don't some of those are physical presence purchases right um you know that that these vendors are not prepared to go online with Right. Um, then you also have like food services. Mm -hmm. That's not going to translate online. No, it won't. You know, your 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 catering services, your food truck is not going to translate online. You're not going to have people attending the virtual conference, also flipping over to your website to order their snow cone or whatever. Right. Like, it's not going to happen. That's not a thing. Right. Um, but at least some of that can be salvaged is what I'm saying. Some of it can. And, but it still creates a, a massive financial impact. Right. Um, and you also have some of these events canceling um, where vendors have paid to be there. Mm -hmm. um, and it, I don't know. But in a lot of cases, some of those registration fees are non-refundable for right. exactly the reason you said is mm -hmm. to host that event. We had to pay for stuff. Right. We, you know, we had to pay deposits. We had to pay for, you know, permits and licenses and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Um, entertainment may have had a non-refundable deposit. Your mm -hmm. speakers for your event, your um, you know audio equipment, your video equipment, mm -hmm. all of these rentals that you will go through. The catering services had a deposit mm -hmm. just for this situation. That if you cancel the event, hey, we already outlaid money. We mm -hmm. are ordered stuff to be uh -huh. that we can't send back. Right. You know. Example. But also, the other problem is, is we're already serving snake oil. And I'm not talking about oil snake that is an actual oil made from snake venom. Okay. Not talking about that. Go okay. for it, because you blew up at me at breakfast this morning with it. Which part? The hand sanitizer. Oh, my God, yes. So, because of coronavirus, there's na now naturally been a massive run on hand sanitizer and cleaning wipes and yada, yada, yada. Um, masks and all these other things. One of the things popping up online was a homemade hand sanitizer recipe, um, which has its own issues and I'll be gentle with that. Um, I understand that there are a lot of things you can make at home. Um, hand sanitizer, at least um, what I have found online and according to um, different health resources, is not something that the health community suggests you try making yourself. Because it is not as easy as it sounds um, to, to get the formulation correct. Um, and ultimately what can happen is you can end up with too little aloe, too much alcohol, and you're actually gonna enter a situation in which you dry out your hands, which will then become cracked and more exposed to germs. Mm -hmm. That said, um, when there's a shortage, I can understand. People will will want to go to the thing they know. Right. So if you're going to do it, please understand. And what, what made me blow up this morning was someone who had posted a recipe 
And, and there were a few different people doing that. But this was in one particular group that I'm a part of. And this person had chimed in with how much better that it was than commercial uh, mixtures. Because it's 91% isopropyl alcohol. So it has a 91% ice, uh, alcohol content, which is way better than those commercial versions that only have like 40 or 60. And I'm looking at the recipe that calls for 91% alcohol to start. This person was not getting that when you mix 91% alcohol with something, you no longer have 91% alcohol. You just lowered the concentration of alcohol in it. Mm -hmm. Like, so if you're talking about a 50-50 mix of 91% alcohol to your um, aloe vera gel, you just drop that alcohol content to 45% at best. If you do a two to one ratio, of like say two cups of your isopropyl alcohol at 91% to your aloe vera gel, basic science tells you that ratio just made that at best 60% alcohol content. Mm -hmm. You're potentially getting the same thing. It's yeah. not better. Um, mm -hmm. And the explanation for that is this and follow the bouncy ball. If you start out with a hundred percent, two cups of a hundred percent water and you mix that with two cups of a hundred percent oil, you no longer have 100% water content. Simple, easy ball to follow. You now have 50% water content. Mm -hmm. The other thing that I saw, and this is popping up in the new age areas. Mm-hmm. There are no crystals that cures coronavirus. Nope. There are no essential oils that cures or prevents coronavirus. Nope. Oil of oregano, olive oil, oil of this, oil of that. There is an oil. Uh, help me here. Uh, marketing company. Oh, Young Living? Yes. Yes. Like, they claim they cure everything. Don't. Just do not. No. No. It's, it's not, not gonna, Like, none of these are going to... Uh, and the colloidal silver, please don't. Please, please, please don't. Please, 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 please don't. On anything silver. Right. Um, we went through that in the last episode. Go back and watch it. It's just easier than me blowing up again. Um... <laughs> But I, I, I understand people wanting to take an interest in their health and be proactive and actively involved in, in their health. And that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. I also understand that, you know, natural medicine, alternative medicines have their place and can be beneficial in a number of ways. And some have been proven very helpful. This is not, or it will never mean, these are substitutes. It is not to me a one-to-one -one translation. Mm -mm. And do not listen to anyone that tells you it is. No. Um, now with that said, do I think that in the, like say essential oil world, because that's getting a lot of attention and has been for a while now, because essential oil, oils have become very popular in the anti-vax community mm -hmm. that you're going to prevent or treat, you know, your measles, your mumps, your rubella, your, uh, chicken pox and smallpox with essential oils. One, no, you're not. But two, does that mean that they have no place? No, it doesn't. <clears throat> um, much like 
with anything else, there are different uses for things that can at least help you feel better. Maybe they're not curative of their own. Mm -hmm. Like, please try to understand the differential. Like, well, no one okay. enjoys the smell of a hospital. No one enjoys the smell of antiseptics. Mm -hmm. So if you want to use incense or essential oil uh, burners to, to mask that smell, please go ahead. Just make sure you're cleaning and disinfecting the stupid things. Mm -hmm. Make sure you're using them appropriately and reasonably and intelligently. And don't ingest essential oils. Oh, God. Okay. Large quantities of ingestion of essential oils is not good. No. Not even small. Mm, like, well, drop, I mean, drop and a half, big deal. Of like okay, paper man or experiment or sage or, you know, those. Right. But ultimately what we're saying is while there are small levels that may not hurt you, uh -huh. large levels definitely will. And we still don't recommend it. Right. Do not drink a bottle of lavender oil, nor give it to your cat or put it on their mm. fur. It will no. shut the kidneys down. Yes. Yeah. And we see Animal that every spray. year. And it's yeah. like, no, do not spray my cat with that. No. Or my dog with that. But no. that being said, in my view, yeah. Alternative medicine and medicine go great together. Yes. Yes, they do. They cannot be one or the other. They need to be done together. And this virus, we don't know. Right. The virus, I'm, from what I'm seeing, when I say seeing, I'm saying what I'm seeing in reports is a laboratory escape virus. Okay. It's not naturally made. It was studied in a lab. Whoa. We're talking about coronavirus right now? Yes. That's not a report I've seen. Yes. That is a report that has come out in Germany. Okie dokie. I'm interested in that one. So, yeah, I'm just saying tread lightly on that one. Okay. There have been conspiracy theories going around. About right. But anyhow. We yeah. don't know what this is. Now, if you're sick with the flu, yeah, I'm going to give you a um, shot of whiskey with some vinegar and some cinnamon stick and some uh, make you a nice hot toddy and send your ass to bed. Yeah. This ain't the flu, people. Yeah. This ain't the flu. This ain't like the flu. Guess Except what? That it, it does start out like that. Like that it same like kind that. of like fever, chills, body achy, like I'm sick. No. That is very hard to distinguish. Mm -hmm. Like, do I have a cold? Is it a sinus infection? Is it, you know, coronavirus? No. Is it SARS? Is it H1N1? Is it, you know, it's and that's a large part of the problem of getting mm -hmm. sick. And especially in our society where we tell people to, to man up right. or to ovary up or to whatever up, mm -hmm. shrug it off and go to work. Right. But what I'm saying is this is not what we faced before in alternative right. health. Yeah. We don't know what it is. Right. Okay, no one's testing if thieves oil can kill it. Well, true. Um, at this point, the best we have is to use the basic standard precautions that we know. Right. Um, and at this point, hope that they're working. Right. But at the same time, we do not, do not, cannot go with this theory that that means you should go running around your life going, well, I washed my hands and I wore a mask and, you know, I, I didn't, you know, I coughed into the crease of my elbow. So, you know, it's fine. It's fine. Right. And Don't, we're not even sure if the, some of these masks aren't designed for this. 
Um, well, and now that one's been an interesting one mm -hmm. um, because it depends upon how you're using the mask and mm -hmm. how effective it can be. Right. Um, and again, effective doesn't mean it's the same thing as isolation. Right. Like reduction of harm is not the same as zero. Right. You know, right. it's kind of like pulling out is very effective at preventing pregnancy. Effective doesn't mean pulling out is 100% not going to get you pregnant. Right. Like but what I'm saying is, two is two different things. Yeah, what I'm saying is they're not sure if the paper masks we're getting and have been handing out for years now mm -hmm. are even effective. I was watching a doctor talk about it earlier, and she's like, no, do not buy the mask. One, we need them for our medical staff, and two, we're not sure what they do. Well, right, and, and some of that is based around which side of the issue you're on. Right. If you are the patient, Mm -hmm. you are the one who is sick and infected, then yes, the mask is a, is going to be effective in at least to some degree preventing that spread out. Now, what I have read is very, very, uh, it draws a big distinction that if you are not infected, do not in any way think that buying the little paper mask and wearing it everywhere is going to prevent you from getting it. Right. Or the fashion mask. Yeah. I, those are fashion mask. Yeah. Like at that point, all you're doing is hoping it stops it. Right. Um, but you still have other ways of becoming infected. Mm -hmm. um, this is just one method to mm -hmm. prevent that cough spread right? Um, or the sneeze spread, um, the, the nose mouth mask. Right. Um, and that's from the patient out. Um, mm -hmm. When you are walking through the world uninfected, that's not a great form of armor because you're still touching. Mm -hmm. And then you're doing this. And this, like every little kid, is just constantly hand on face and in mm -hmm. each other's faces. Right. But that corona is not effective right. to children. Do I know? Corona isn't touching children. It's an old man disease. Well, no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. That's not quite what I've understood, is that children are not being are not suffering the same death tolls that it is causing more deaths in older men. Mm -hmm. um, but it doesn't mean that it is not infecting children. From what I've seen, it's not infecting children. Okay. Yeah. That one I, I've not quite seen. Um, yeah. I would still not call that. Like I would be careful. Like, don't just send your kid to school because you think it's the flu because kids aren't getting infected. No, 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 no. Don't send your kids to school if they have the flu. That's even more deadlier for children. Um, well, yes, it is. And two, it's, it still comes back to that same problem we have. Mm -hmm. um, and that's our child care problem. Right. That, and also the problem of, you know, the CDC not wanting to test people. Um, well, some of that is not necessarily that they do not want to test people. It's that currently with the CDC, their testing is still um, not reliable, um, especially not for mass adoption, uh, for all testing. Um, and that the CDC, I think mostly because of that, has been very hesitant to roll it out to people who aren't already in that mostly confirmed. Mm -hmm. Like it's pretty friggin' obvious. This has to be what it is. Well, so what now is like we have Hong Kong. pardon? What gets me is we have Hong Kong mm -hmm. who 
have drive throughs set up. Drive in, tested, pull up window one, test, pull up window two, you're either positive or negative. Right. But America, we can't even get tests for all. It's, it has to be this yet. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I don't know. We You've also got to look at the last four years. Mm-hmm. And well, what has happened to the CDC financially? What has happened in the U.S. Uh, in terms of healthcare and the horrible game of musical chairs? Mm -hmm. um, and the constant revolving door, um, the massive issues um, with basic government employment for decades. Um, the, this, you know, civil service doesn't pay. Yeah. Yeah, it, and it doesn't anymore. Like, right. we're not retaining the best and brightest in the places that we need to do <clears throat> at a government level. Mm-hmm. Um, we are cutting funding for healthcare research. We are cutting funding for health departments. We are cutting funding for um, the CDC year after year after year. Um, and this is this is why we need this funding. Like this is it. Well, they're too busy concentrating on other bullshit, especially health departments. Well. Not always. Um, like, backing up to the CDC specifically, like, this mm -hmm. is what they do. Yeah. This is where they are or should be. Right. But and when you're jerking them out of um, the very, like, honestly, one of the biggest things that's been thrown up in this is that just within the last couple of years, because of a, a, a funding cut, the one of the, the strongest experts that would have technically been at the heart of this epidemic in China, working directly with China. Oh, we don't need that. We're not going to approve funding for that. We're going to cut that. Mm -hmm. And that was born out of the SARS problem. Mm -hmm. Like we already saw this when, hey, we need to address this. We need to have a better connection here. Mm -hmm. But in the last few years, decided that wasn't a good use of our money. Mm -hmm. That 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 knowing the history we had with SARS and how that went through the world, we still like lemmings off a cliff. Mm -hmm. Marched into saying, "Ah, eh, we don't need that." Mm -hmm. You know, maybe if perhaps there's another outbreak, might have perhaps wanted that. Mm -hmm. You know, it seemed like a great big maybe that we were spending money on. Um, yeah. But now, mm -hmm. now we start trying to find experts to step back in. Yeah, but even in that little county health department. Mm -hmm. They're too busy complicating people's lives. Well, in of some doing what they were designed to do. Right. Um, and in some ways, yes. But I do have to give props to the uh oh, help me out here. Um it oh Massachusetts, was it? Um, there was a, uh, doctor who had a possible case mm -hmm. was told to self quarantine for two weeks, mm -hmm. popped out to go to an event. Mm -hmm. Now there have, uh, there was just across the border into, I believe Vermont. Mm -hmm. Um, though I may have my States messed up, um, popped over to go to a private event. Mm hmm ended up infecting a colleague mm -hmm. and now there's roughly 175 other potential exposures right that showed up for this event uh-huh um now that venue is shut down because they can't even uh-huh um because of the number of people freaking out that they had reserved that space um and i believe that was uh Oh, I forget what it was called. Foxes something. Um, 
that the people want out. They do not even want to use the venue, no matter right. how well they clean it. They do not want to go there. Right. Um, so all like it, it has become a chain reaction event. Not only the number of people exposed because this guy couldn't follow a simple 14 day quarantine. Mm -hmm. um, but that County health department, the props part of this has now stepped in and used a public health law mm -hmm. um, to put him under a very stringent form of a required quarantine. Mm -hmm. He, he breaks quarantine again. The cops get sent for it. He gets arrested. Right. And that's what health departments should be doing. Mm -hmm. Health departments should be out in the community working with our elderly, working with our children, not running around being bureaucratical pains in the necks, mm -hmm. making stupid sensation laws to get more grant funding or, you know, creating more problems for restaurant owners or other businesses opening up. Potentially. Uh, like, I understand it. That that it does become a bit of a, of a question of overreach. Mm -hmm. Like, are they abusing that authority to go into areas that are not the kind of health we intended these organizations to directly deal with? Mm -hmm. That you know, honestly, when we're talking about health departments, was our original intent, you know, typhoid. Mm -hmm. um, STDs, mm -hmm. um, massive actual direct health. Yes, that that are clear and obvious, and you know this is not a matter of of personal choice mm -hmm. at any level. Right. Um, but then we've also had problems with health departments from the other direction, mm -hmm. in which. Even after, you know, like when we talk about coronavirus right now, yes, we totally support that health department going out and, you know, if this dude breaks quarantine again, by God, we're going to throw your butt in jail. Right. We support that right now. There was a point in HIV, AIDS, GRID, um, that we supported health departments throwing people into jail um, for what we called criminal infection. For knowing they were HIV positive, for knowing that they had this, and still having unprotected sex, or even in some jurisdictions, just having sex as a potential exposure. Mm -hmm. That we totally supported that criminalization. But this many years on, Mm -hmm. With all the advancements, with all the different things that have come out um, in terms of treatment, mm -hmm. now we're starting to look back at that kind of reaction from health departments and go, no, 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 no. reel it back in. This mm -hmm. is not 1984. Right. This is not 1990. This isn't 1998. This isn't even 2010. Right. This is a totally different issue now. Mm -hmm. um, continuing to engage uh, criminal infection law is now considered overkill. Mm -hmm. Way overkill. Right. Um, and a lot of health departments have backed off of it. And they're looking more to prevention and treatment Mm -hmm. And continuing the criminalization front. Well, not only that, but the health departments and systems were designed to provide mm -hmm. immune um, vac vaccinations, mm -hmm. nursing in rural areas, mm -hmm. and assisting in health situations. In a health crisis. In and health crisis. an ongoing um disease spread. Mm -hmm. And I get that. Um, you know, and, and in addition to off, uh, you know, like especially offering rural health care and health care um, for people who can't otherwise afford it. Right. 
is a big part of what they do and should be. Um, with that said, it does start to cross into that line, especially when we start calling obesity an epidemic, mm -hmm. cancer an epidemic, mm -hmm. um, you know, heart disease an epidemic, diabetes mm -hmm. an epidemic. All right. But mm -hmm. if FEMA acted the way the health department was, we would have so many more issues with them than we do the health departments. Um, define that out. Are you talking about in terms, uh, like, let's say, because uh, a, a good candidate in West Virginia to talk about for FEMA mm -hmm. um, would be like that kind of um, uh, Welch area. Right. The area of Welch. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's, it's a bowl. Yeah. Every time it rains, it fills up like a bowl. Mm -hmm. um, for years, FEMA during flooding has stepped in and mm -hmm. helped with the recovery efforts. Every time, there's always that question of why do you continue to live here? Why do you keep rebuilding? Why are you going to not take that money mm -hmm. and get out? Mm hmm and while we can armchair this and sit there and go, you know, those are very good questions. You could also say that about the coastlines. Mm -hmm. Every time a storm hits North Carolina, mm -hmm. or Florida, or, you know, or turn around and look at California. And every time there's a wildfire, mm -hmm. why do you keep going back up the mountain and building a freaking house? But what I'm saying, though, is mm -hmm. if FEMA turned around and started acting like the little hell in the health department, they're going, oh, you can't build there. Okay. Last flood, you got to move out. Oh, you can't build the house that way. You have to have a 20-foot basement. Well, uh, then again, it does become a question, what would that look like? Would that become a beneficial thing? Is if, like, say in Welch, you know it's going to flood. Mm -hmm. it, it's not an if, it's a when. Mm -hmm. Okay, we know that it is very prone to flooding. Mm -hmm. If when people rebuilt, mm -hmm. instead of we're just going to put a standard house back where a standard house just got washed away, mm -hmm. uh, using standard building construction technique, if we went the one step further and said, okay, we'll give you that money, but you got to do things mm -hmm. because this isn't going to be an every five, 10, 15 year thing where we buy you a new house mm -hmm. to do exactly what you just did that just got that one washed away because we know this is going to happen again in another right. five to 10 years. Right. Yeah. But what I'm saying is if any other government agency acted like the health department does, overstepping their reaches when they're not needed mm -hmm. at all, we would be up in arms. I'll guarantee you that we'd have every county council, every committee meeting filled with people. Well, and a large part of what allows that to happen is we get into the vice concept. Um, that, that effectively, um, we, we've moved from just the days in which alcohol and drugs were vices, along with prostitution and gambling, that those were the core, you know, indefensible vices. They were the bad things you did that you can't moralize. And we have included smoking. We have included um, now basically anything unhealthy. Mm -hmm. That excess sugar consumption, eating, you know, uh, uh, Big Macs, um, junk food, all of that is now a vice. That you, it's an, it, it becomes hard to defend mm -hmm. um, because we have on a society level as, as like the whole of 
deem these things um, bad for us, at least on a society level. So then stepping in as a health department and trying to change those behaviors mm -hmm. becomes at least acceptable because you can't turn around and say, but, but, but we like those things, mm -hmm. you know, that, that because society agreed and mm -hmm. in the global sense that these are bad that we have major health authorities calling these things bad, it becomes socially unacceptable to argue against them. But this is not what they're designed to do. What they're no. designed to do is what is to be providing immunizations, mm -hmm. we're on health care, and reacting to health crises. Right. That's what that, that organization is designed to do, that governmental entity. Right. Is designed to do. Mm -hmm. We haven't seen much of it. Also, because in the last, like, you've also got to stop and step back into when these departments were created. Yeah. Um, and in I the think 30s. Them, well, yeah, and mostly centered around tuberculosis. Mm hmm. Um, something that was a major, major disease creating lots of health panic, mm -hmm. um, much like we're facing now with coronavirus. Right. And speaking um, of that time, you know, yeah. they also recommended caging your baby and hanging them outside a window. For fresh air. Yeah. 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 Well, and again, it, it's kind of that un unfortunate thing. We look back at history and science and medicine, and there's some, like, ugly things that that happen um in terms of not necessarily understanding what's going on and not necessarily understanding that a thing we thought we knew wasn't actually a thing mm -hmm. um and again hanging the baby in a cage you know your your fresh air and sunshine was in some ways considered like the height of health care Mm -hmm. that that this is what everyone needed and that all disease was a condition of not receiving fresh air and sunlight. That fresh air and sunlight will stamp it out. Mm -hmm. um, you just need more exposure to that. Um, not always the case. Um, you can definitely in some ways improve things with fresh air and sunlight um especially you know it ultimately comes down to it wasn't really the fresh air and sunlight that was helping um in some ways it was just the reduction of stress like the vacation effect mm -hmm. um is that you rest mm -hmm. that you are not under this constant stress Mm -hmm. negative stress, um, which not everyone has the privilege of. Um, but it, at a time, it seemed like that was the, the, like the cause and the effect weren't directly understood. No. Um, and we'll continue to go through that with science and mm -hmm. with medicine and with healthcare. Mm -hmm. That the things we think we know, we end up having to test extensively before we find out uh oh, we misunderstood that. But they've got to be looking for that misunderstood, and they're not doing that. These recommendations are the same recommendations they gave to prevent um, typhoid and tuberculosis and SARS and everything else. This is like their go to script. It is because, in a, for some, or for a lot of illness, those are universal precautions. They do prevent the spread. Right. But again, that's kind of the toolkit. Right now, we're still with coronavirus, at least this version of it, in the we don't know what we don't know. Mm -hmm. And the best that anyone has to offer is this is what we're going to hope works. Like, these are universal. This is the best we got. 
Mm -hmm. And until we can demonstrate provably, repetitively, mm -hmm. um, you know, repeatably, that mm -hmm. this isn't right, this is everything we know should work. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, that is sometimes where healthcare ends up. Mm -hmm. to go back to the basics. All right. And, and that's why, like, health departments should be at Kroger's passing out hand sanitizer. Again, there's an argument against hand sanitizer, even. I know. That, that realistically, you may end up with obsessive hand sanitizer use, mm -hmm. creating a bigger problem than what you think you're solving. Right. But that's what they're preaching, so why aren't they doing it? Um, actually what they're technically preaching is hand washing, 20 second right. hand washing as frequently as possible, mm -hmm. um, because that does generally cause the least damage to the skin of the hands, um, while also germ removing, mm -hmm. not a hundred percent. Um, no one's ever claimed general hand washing is 100%. Right. It, again, it's about reduction, not zeros. Mm hmm um, just kind of the same way that for, you know, before we understood hand washing as a general precaution, many, 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 many people got sick and or died from salmonella poisoning mm -hmm. because there was nothing understood about touching that chicken, for instance, your raw meat was putting germs on your hands and you were spreading that all the way around the kitchen mm -hmm. that just so much as washing with water helped wiping with a paper towel would help but the most effective mm -hmm. the most effective was to wash with soap and water for 20 seconds again not a hundred percent but you don't necessarily need a hundred percent to stop a spread mm -hmm. that 90% can be effective. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. But again, you know, I'm still disappointed in the health department's responses. Um, okay. I'm really interested in seeing it, what the British health system is doing um, okay. because they are in much more fire. Um, you know, they're, they're buying out hotels and turning them into quarantine wards. Mm -hmm. They're providing, a, um, a, what is it? Um, basically, they're paying your bills while you're in quarantine. That is something that we will probably struggle with massively in this country, is getting mm -hmm. someone to understand the value of that. Right. Um, is that that's going to end up being the, yeah, it's going to cost money. It's going to cost a lot of money. But how many dead people mm -hmm. does it take to make the value? Right. Like it was the same argument we had um, with getting the uh, Red Cross to universally test blood donations. Mm hmm how many dead people until it's worth it. Right. Yeah, that, that's kind of the end the band plays online. Right. How many people have to die right. before you go worth it? Right. You know, do you have Where to knock out five percent of the population of the United States? 10, 20, 30? Like where where's you know, when do we come back mm -hmm. and ask for money? Right. Do you need 30% of the United States to drop dead? And then we go, oh, well, maybe it's worth it. Do we have to reactivate the old sanitariums that are now haunted attractions? Not that we even can for some of those buildings. Like, they're right. barely functional as attractions. Right, because Tapoid is originally the reason that we got, um, oh, come on, Trans-Allegheny. Uh, yes. Or was it tuberculosis? TB. Yeah. TB opened a lot of sanitariums. Yeah. Um, or excuse me, uh, sanatoriums. Right. 
I believe is the correct word. Sanitarium is for mental health. Sanatorium is for physical health. Right. And yeah, all just, the yeah. other, like the hot springs and all that. Mm -hmm. I mean, do we have to reactivate those? I mean, because here's the hard facts of it. If we have a TV case in West Virginia right now, there's only one facility that has the uh, Nutrisair system, and that facility is in Beckley. Mm -hmm. And I'm not even sure that wing is even still in use. Well, and but but here's our bigger problem is for decades, we started taking health out of mm -hmm. the public concern mm -hmm. and moving it into private entities. Mm -hmm. Back when tuberculosis was a great big giant threat to national health, we still saw health as a community issue. Mm -hmm. We have since moved into the category of seeing it as an individual responsibility. Mm -hmm. And in doing so, we made public health care a joke. Um, through deinstitutionalization, through private insurance, through, um, you know, doing everything we can at this point to remove health care coverage mm -hmm. while allowing uh, the pharmaceutical industry and the healthcare industry prices to skyrocket <laughs> out of reach mm -hmm. to at least the majority of people who haven't either seen a raise have taken pay cuts, can't find employment, or are working uh, like not where they used to be. Right. You know, we've eroded the middle class that could afford health care. That's mm -hmm. pretty much gone. Um, most people are in the low income category, right. and their benefits are dwindling right. as related to health care. Right. And that comes from us eroding and destroying the labor unions to sit up and fought for that. Right. Um, yeah. it, it, it's come from out or born out of this privatization concept. Mm -hmm. You know, this, this same theory that went hand in hand with trickle down e economics, mm -hmm. which has never worked. Right. That you would reduce costs and improve services through privatization mm -hmm. has never happen right we and employers will do what they what's best for their employees never happen yeah, they'll do what's best for their bottom line right and moreover and ugly as it is to say and people will also do what is best for their bank account mm -hmm. even if that means your child care worker it's going to show up to the daycare center sick mm -hmm. because they can't afford to lose that job right. that minimum wage job that they have taking care of your precious angel that may or may not offer benefits is unfortunately their source of income so if you don't offer a solution to that ultimately they have to weigh the risks right for themselves right which is also been brought up as a big part of the anti-vax movement mm -hmm. is people have have quit seeing health as a community issue right and your neighbor's problem your friend's problem your friend's thing mm -hmm. and started making choices solely based on individual me mm -hmm. and what's best for me and when you start running that model, mm -hmm. a lot of things start becoming acceptable. Mm -hmm. You quit caring about you or they or them. Mm -hmm. So now you have a lot of people running around with very individualistic ideas um, in a system that doesn't offer them any options. Mm -hmm. That's not going to help them out. Mm -hmm to help stop a, a, a health disaster. Right. So we are potentially looking at a massive health disaster if this begins to spread. And like our best right. hope, 
our best hope right now is that the primary, like that in that border jump, that the majority of people that get infected because of it coming into the country are people that can afford to stay home. Mm -hmm. that will stay home, mm -hmm. that will understand the importance. Right. But more than likely, what we're going to see is just like the doctor at a hospital going right on with his life. Mm -hmm. Because that dinner, making that professional contact, was more important than the concerns he should have had. Mm -hmm. for everyone else in that room, right. whether or not it was later confirmed. Right. And it doesn't matter if it was confirmed or not. He was within the red line district. Well, right. And, and But that was the important part is I believe at that point he did not have a confirmed case. He subsequently was confirmed to have coronavirus. Mm -hmm. um, but realistically, when we're sitting here talking about doctors... Mm -hmm. people with degrees that are supposed to be in positions of health authority mm -hmm. going outside of quarantine. What do you think happens to Becky, the healthcare worker mm -hmm. to, to, you know, Tim, the car salesman to, you know, John, the call center worker. Mm -hmm. What, what do you think their choices are? Right. This is someone who had the ability to stay home and didn't. Right. And it wasn't even like he was going to work. Right. Which you could begin to understand. He just wanted to go to a professional event. Right. And have some bad chicken. And spread a disease. Exactly. So now we have, we'll say 200 other exposures. Well, 175 or, a hundred, well, I guess roughly 175 potential. That was the number of total attendees. Um, and already one other confirmed case because of him. Yeah, but are they counting in the staff? Right. Because you know the event was a wait staff. Right. You know, are we counting in the cleaning crew? Mm -hmm. Are we counting in the trash man that have oh, to pick right. these bags up? Not. But then you also have the, the, like, that's the problem with a large venue spread. Uh-huh. Is that, and especially in something that spreads easily, um, which is, the, this is basically in, the, the, the spread is very easy. Mm -hmm. um, when you have that, you immediately start exploding. Right. With all the additional. Right. You know, so, yeah, we're looking at a good close 250 additional spreads. Oh, multiply that by like 10. Yeah. Because once you start with a room of 175 people plus all the staff mm -hmm. and then all the people they next come in contact with and the next people those people come in contact with, you start seeing an explosion. Right. And that's the problem. Right. That's the big problem. And that's, that's all because of one asshole. Right. You know, so... And that's the reason I'm happy for him, them using those quarantine laws. Absolutely. Dating back to the 30s is because of that effect. That is a correct use of the health department. Mm-hmm. But yes, we yeah. do have issues with health departments going beyond. Yes. And I can understand that. And I can understand the sentiment of that. And I can also understand the effects of that. Mm -hmm. And especially the way a lot of that gets applied. Right. Um, also has very disproportionate effects on communities of color and um, low income individuals. Right. Because a lot of this turns into policies for public housing mm -hmm. or for, you know, public schools mm -hmm. um, doesn't apply if you have a you know house in the suburbs. Right. 
if you don't rent, if you're not in an apartment complex, if mm -hmm. you're not in a trailer park, if you right. are not sending your kids to a public school. Cool. Right. Yeah. Um, and it does become an issue. Yeah. Because um, what happens if you live in, in public housing and now you're placed under quarantine? It's a whole building placed under quarantine because they all share heat vents. Well, and then you have the additional effects of typically within public housing, you're going to see more than one individual. Yeah. Um, and so that means you now have a family in quarantine. Mm hmm. Um, because more than likely, unless you're a, you know, gone for multiple days a week and away from that family member who is now sick and quarantined, mm -hmm. you are effectively part of that quarantine too. Right. You know, you're living, you're breathing, you're sharing a bed, you're giving hugs and kisses, uh, you know, sharing a cup, whatever, family. Mm hmm Um... So within that, it's not just the one. Right. And I think that gets lost in translation is it's not like you get up, do your daily life for all these years, you know, kiss your wife on the, you know, to go all heterosexual in your face, get up in the morning, kiss your wife, go to work, get feel a little sick and go to the doctor and get sent home under quarantine. Mm -hmm. And your wife continues going about her life and buying the groceries and paying the bills and coming in and out freely. Right. That's your next possible exposure. Right. And say, in the 30s, mm -hmm. the question is about, well, how are we going to get food? How are we going to get supplies? How are we going to get this? Mm -hmm. That was answered by the health department. Mm -hmm. It was the health department, the county nurses that done that. We are now, I think, that county has four for the whole county. Right. They can't do all that. Yeah. Yeah. And these are governmental cuts that have been occurred. Yeah. Well, yeah. and more so, it's back to the concept of we quit caring about community health. Right. Shifted everything to personal, private, individual. Right. Right. And when you do that, it, it it all sounds great on paper. It'll save you a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Or make you a lot of tax dollars. Or make you a lot of tax dollars. But ultimately, at the when you get into a crisis, mm -hmm. it all starts to fall apart. When you need your communities to be able to come together the most and support each other, mm -hmm. now you're least capable. Right. And that's where we're at. We are least capable mm -hmm. of managing this, of handling yeah. this. And we don't have an administration that's going to try. No. Because we're still holding on to, um, you know, the, this high income mentality. Right. Well, if no, you're in the 1%, but if no, you're right. even in the top 10%, Right. But not only that, but because of how what the communications have been said, mm -hmm. our news media ain't getting all the information because it has to come from one governmental office. Right. It has and to be clear. News track well, right. It has to be cleared through Mike Pence. Ultimately. Yeah. It has to be cleared through Mike Pence. Um, responsible for a massive HIV outbreak because he didn't want to deal with that. Mm -hmm. um, but what what I was getting at is if you're in the top 10%, the, the people that, you know, this administration gives a damn about, which not really, it's more like the top 1%, but if you're in the other 9% of, of the top 10, you'll be okay. You know, where you're financially stable enough to just sit this one out. <coughs> Take the summer off. Do nothing. Hunker down, mm -hmm. um, and, and you know, live a life of seclusion without you know really financially suffering. Then yes, you don't care about this. It's not that big a deal. Mm -hmm. um, for the other ninety percent who are or 
potentially a little less than that. But ultimately, the people who really do have to get up and go to work every day or they're going to lose everything they've got, mm -hmm. not that they all, you know, for the bottom end of that, not that they have anything to lose currently. It's just a daily struggle to be fed. Mm -hmm. The lights on, maybe. Mm -hmm. Repeat, maybe. Um, for those people, this is a looming disaster. Right. Very that, much. So. Yeah, because when you're talking about the mass majority of American households cannot face a four hundred dollar emergency, mm -hmm. what do you think is going to happen when they don't work for two weeks? Mm -hmm. Or two days. Well, but ultimately two weeks. Right. In two days would be a disaster is disastrous enough and create right. enough problems. But not working for two weeks. Mm. What do you do? Exactly. Like if you can't on a day to day basis be sure you can afford food already, two weeks is a long time. Mm -hmm. If you don't work today, you can't eat tomorrow. That's a long, two weeks is a really long time. Exactly. And it's not being addressed. It's not even no. being communicated. No. And we're still continuing to see this entitlements mentality. Right. And it's like um, another article I was reading of a teacher that was going through cancer treatment and ran out of sick days. And yeah. They depend, depend on their co-workers donating sick days. Instead of actually having a, a, a school system and a healthcare um, policy yeah. that recognized major medical illness and the needs of that. Exactly. That, you know, cancer isn't the flu. No. You're going to be sick and unable to work for a while. Right. And you need something other than the kindness of strangers and coworkers and random people giving up their sick days mm -hmm. in order to help you get through. Right. And that's like, our, it's not a heartwarming it, story. It shouldn't yeah. be. It should be frightening. Right. And that's our educators. That's not even including yeah. our healthcare workers. Mm hmm. You know who are supposed to have all the equipment they need. They obviously don't. True. Well, but then you have the short staffing in healthcare. Exactly. That, that's the equipment. Yeah. We're already having shortages on masks. Mm -hmm. They don't have the staff because who wants to work a job that's 120 hours in two weeks? Well, and moreover, doesn't pay well. And doesn't pay crap. Right. And then you also have private healthcare entities mm -hmm. um, who are trying to basically control costs by hiring and keeping on as few people as possible. Mm -hmm. So when you turn around and you have a massive healthcare issue, mm -hmm. Then you turn around and have nurses working sick. Yeah. EMT working sick. Yeah. Or hurt. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, but yeah. Yeah. We're going on almost two, two and a half hours. This is a oh, really wow. long show. Um, but it's a really important show. Mm -hmm. So we're going to kind of cut it here um we'll be back on tuesday and there may be a show on wednesday as i'm trying to catch up with my guest yes yeah um so if there is like share subscribe comment mm -hmm. below what you think about all that we talked about from the sherry pie and catfishing all the way down to how you know we have took what originally was a support system and turned it into a bureaucratic craziness. Yes. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. Until next week. Good night, y'all.